Welcome to our next video. This time we're going to talk about a couple of concepts that we've mentioned again and again throughout our previous videos. And those concepts or terms were primary literature, secondary literature, and theory. What's primary literature? Well, the primary literature are the novels, short stories, and excerpts that we have been reading throughout the term that we have been discussing in class. Oh, so without a primary literature, we can't actually write a term paper at all. That's right. You can choose the novels that were our main primary literature, but you could also look at the excerpts that we've given you and maybe even take the book that we took the excerpts from and discuss this if you like the excerpts more than the novels. Of course, it's also possible to bring in primary literature from outside the course in some courses, but that doesn't mean it happens in all of them. If you're going to do something like that, make sure you talk to the supervisor of your exam before you make any commitments or buy any books. I think that's about everything we can say about primary literature. So what is secondary literature? Well, secondary literature can be reviews, literary criticism, literary scholarship. Usually it's responses to the primary literature in one way or another. Usually when we refer to secondary literature, we mean academic responses, though. Sometimes the book that you're talking about uh, is fairly new. This is certainly the case with some of the books in this course. And in that case, you may want to refer to reviews in certain literary publications or high-profile newspapers, for example. But that depends really on the book that you're looking at. Usually the older the text and more it's been researched, the less you're relying on things like reviews. But the newer it is, uh, pretty much anything can become open game. It doesn't even have to refer to your book in particular. Sometimes there's just nothing that has been done on the book that you want to be writing on. And that can be quite daunting, but don't be afraid. You can always take secondary literature that looks at similar texts or maybe at previous works from the same author or works that fall into the same genre and have other similarities and take the findings of that secondary literature in order to bolster and to justify your own arguments. Some students get nervous when they're writing a term paper because they can't find secondary literature that relates to the theory that they're applying or looking at uh, within the context of a given piece of primary literature. But that's kind of off base. Your secondary literature doesn't need to connect to this theory because then you would be, well, writing the same thing that has already been written, perhaps. Instead, we can actually use that kind of secondary literature to help bolster our arguments. Sometimes we can use an argument that's been made and say, in a different context, another literary scholar, da da da, has said this with regard to this argument. So this argument has already been made before, and there is some argument to support it. That's kind of what you signal towards. I think an example of writing about a recent text and using previous research, a good example would be Ocean Wong's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, where probably one of the first scholarly articles that deals with the text is drawing on previous research that focuses on Maxine Hong Kingston's Woman Warrior because of the similarities. And that kind of research is, well, I mean, that's part of the whole secondary literature phenomenon, right? And it really builds up and allows you to, well, synthesize different ideas together. And I think that's a pretty important point. You can't really rely on one piece of secondary literature for that reason. You can't just use one piece because if you do, well, you're not going to necessarily have that much critical feedback or engagement or discussion between different literary scholars. I think that kind of also is something that's common in theory, right? That's right, though with theories, it's more often possible to use, to use just one theoretical framework, perhaps. But before we delve deeper into that, maybe we should talk about what theory actually is, right? Oh, what, what is theory? <laughs> well, I would say it's sort of your main method, your, your framework, or the approach that you take for your analysis of your primary text. Can you just use one theory, or do you use multiple theories when you make a text or write your own article? 
you can, in fact, use multiple theories. You can combine them, you can uh, synthesize them even, or you could take smaller theoretical concepts that come from a larger corpus of, of theory. And I think I think that, that would be a good tie-in to, to examples, because what we'll be talking about quite a lot is post-colonial theory. But that's not just one single theory, right? No, I mean, that's a whole broad range of concepts, uh, some of which are in this course, some of which are outside of it. Even if we think at the beginning of post-colonial studies, if we think of Edward Said's work on Orientalism, it's actually a synthesis of a lot of concepts that were emerging or had emerged already around the same time. It relies very heavily on Foucauldian discourse theory and combines it with concepts of othering, and it even brings in a bunch of other kind of lesser theoretical concepts as well to provide us a broader idea of Orientalist theory. That in itself is actually just one part of the broader post-colonial theory, though. So you can also take different theoretic concepts and put them together if that works, if they work together productively. It's important to consider that. Sometimes different theoretical approaches draw from different intellectual traditions. They might actually disagree even if they seem like they might fit together. When you are bringing in more than one theory, things do get a little bit more complicated. It might be a little bit harder to write a paper like this. If you're looking at a synthesis of different ideas, it might be worth it to see if it's already been done before to give you an idea of if it actually works. Even so, we would like probably to stress uh, about how theory isn't about just the application of it, though. You get to change the theory when you're working with it. You get to show its shortcomings and limitations. Maybe Edward Said's Orientalist theory, for example, <laughs> picking on Said right now, doesn't really apply anymore because it's almost 40 years old. Maybe because of reasons like that, you're able to stretch the limits of these theories and point out gaps in their knowledge your work could contribute to the theory and develop it further. So you don't necessarily have to agree with the theory that you're quoting, nor with the secondary literature that will be part of your term paper. That will be part of your term paper. I find that it's quite frequent for students to be afraid to question previous literary scholars because they have a kind of aura of, of, of being... Uh, the authority. That's not the case. You're always very welcome to challenge previous arguments. It's just important that you do so in a um, scientific way and, well, you know, an academic way that uh, has some basis. Your arguments have to be um, logical. They have to be, you have to be able to, to sort of justify them. Moreover, you can even challenge your lecturer's opinions in this course. So don't be afraid to challenge academic authorities. I think that's a good last word. Be critical, because that's what primary, secondary, and, well, well, primary and secondary literature, but also theory, are all about. Right, so I think that's about it. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy our next video. Thank you.